Greetings and welcome to this presentation on your postgraduate thesis or specifically writing up your postgraduate thesis. My name is Kenneth and I will provide you with an examiner's perspective on writing a postgraduate thesis. So let's delve right into the process. As a caveat, this presentation is intended as a general guideline. Please refer to your specific institutional guidelines for format and presentation style as these may vary among respective institutions. My name is Kenneth Rodriguez. I have examined multiple Masters of Science thesis as well as Doctor of Philosophy thesis. I have supervised students both at the level of the Master of Science as well as the Doctor of Philosophy and this is my brief CV. Let's delve right into the process. Where do I begin the process of research and writing up my thesis as well? The process of writing up a thesis begins long before you actually commence your research work and this is where you have to make a decision. It is mind over matter and the process commences long before you set off on your actual journey. The process begins with a decision followed by consultation with your supervisor. You also have to refer to your respective university guidelines in order to determine the criteria for completing your degree or completion of your thesis. These may relate to specific criteria such as publications related to your thesis as well as other criteria which are prerequisites for your degree. Once you establish a relationship with your supervisor, please establish ground rules as this ensures professionalism with regard to thesis writing. Now, this is one aspect which is not covered in many presentations, but I would like to introduce you to the emotion associated with thesis writing. As a large part of this exercise involves emotional interaction with your thesis as well as your research and your supervisor. And you should always maintain a professional relationship when it comes down to your thesis as well as your research. Before you begin, I would like to suggest that you do this self-reflection. You ask yourself if you really want to do this as the process involves significant amount of investment both in terms of your time as well as your resources. Are you doing it because you love it? Do you have a passion for the subject or are you doing it for a job? Both these choices are well intentioned but you must set your ground rules with regard to this choice. And the last aspect is your detachment of your emotions from your actual work. You should decide whether you have the emotional strength to withstand the onslaught of the challenges which you will face during the process of your thesis writing. And let's go down to the facts. These are the facts. So you have decided to set up on your journey of writing a thesis and your research and you are, want to fly, of course, in an infinite blue sky, you want to achieve a Nobel Prize. However, you have limitations. The first limitation is your supervisor himself or herself. You must establish a professional working relationship with your supervisor. The supervisor will also have limitations in terms of the project as well as the budget, which will curtail or limit the scope of your thesis. You may have personal limitations, you may be uh, supporting a family, you may have financial limitations as well as work load and these are your personal limitations and you may also have limitations of your capacity. You may also have problems with staying focused uh, on the job itself and then you may also end up in a situation where your data is haywire because you did not have sufficient data points and then you will say oh no I want to give up. So these are challenges which you will face and you must accept this reality and be prepared for it. Now we go into the actual writing up of the thesis. First establish a mind map and what is a mind map? A mind map is a collection of data points which establish your scope as well as your perspective on your research and your thesis. What is a thesis? 
A thesis is simply a collection of facts organized in a manner which can be deciphered by your reader. And who is your reader? Your reader or your readers are your audience, which is your examiners and your peers. And please remember that your thesis will be referenced over many years and you are responsible for the authenticity of your data as well as the integrity of that data. Your thesis must have clarity and consistency. And this is one fact which you must always be aware of. The table of contents. This is your table of contents and this is what you must incorporate into your table of contents. The first is clarity and consistency. Your hypothesis should be crystal clear. There should be consistency in three sections which are the material methods which must be reflected in the results and which must be then reflected in the discussion. Please establish or write down your table of contents prior to writing up your thesis as this is the framework for your thesis. The abstract. The abstract is generally presented on a single page and it should be introduced using the IMRED and I have said IMRED with a parenthesis C format. You have the introduction. You begin with around three to four sentences on the introduction in which you incorporate your hypothesis. Then comes your material methods, your results, your discussion and your conclusion. Please ensure that all of this information is condensed into a single page. We now move on to the first aspect which is your introduction. And let us look at the elements of your introduction. This is what is expected in your introduction, a general background. Please do not be specific, the, the background should be general. You should identify the gap in knowledge, you should construct a hypothesis and state it clearly. You should formulate your objectives and state those clearly as well and you should state the scope. This is what an examiner looks forward to in a thesis. The gap in knowledge. Now remember that when you have established yourself on this path of writing up a thesis and conducting research, you are going to evolve into an authority in that field. And this requires you to read extensively on existing literature with regard to your thesis topic. And when you have read through the literature, you will be able to identify the gap in knowledge. For instance, this is a gap. Previous studies could not correlate genetic mutations with disease X because of a paucity of data. So in this case, you have identified the gap which is highlighted in red and which is the paucity or the limitations of data. Hypothesis A hypothesis is a statement which can be tested. Please avoid using long-winded poetic descriptions in your hypothesis. It's not descriptive, it's purely a statement which is precise and which can be tested. For instance, this is a very specific statement. Mutations in gene X at nucleotides 341 and 426 are associated with the phenotype Y. Now when I want to test this hypothesis, I have to design specific methods to assess or to test the statements which I have made. A, a hypothesis must be specific and the scope must be limited. Now you can have three outcomes and you should be prepared for this. Please do not try to adjust your data to align itself to the hypothesis. Your data will either challenge your hypothesis, it will concur with your hypothesis or it will represent new data. So please be open to this. You should have an unbiased approach when it comes down to hypothesis testing. Let us look at the objectives. The hypothesis will translate into objectives and the objectives will drive the materials and methods. Now the hypothesis is basically going to assess, correlate, or identify. So these terms should be included in your objectives and you must discuss this with your supervisor. The first chapter which is the introduction establishes the foundation for your thesis. 
please do not take it lightly just because it is a limited or a four or six page document. This establishes the basis for all of your research as well as your discussion and your conclusions. The scope of the study. No study is infinite. Infinity is never arriving. Research will never end, but you must complete your thesis and deliver a document. Most of us as researchers have a fear of closure and we continuously want to improve upon our research, but you must set a limit for the time during which you will complete your thesis and establish a scope. And this is what we say, the infinite blue sky. There's no infinite blue sky when it comes down to thesis writing. Infinite blue sky relates to research, which will go on throughout your life and beyond. And we must establish a scope. Now the scope gives the examiner a limitation within which you are working. If you do not establish your scope, the examiner will question you during your viva and you may end up in a situation where the examiner establishes the scope for you rather than you establishing the scope for your respective thesis. Literature review. Let us look into the elements of the literature review. The lodestone. I am referring to the lodestone as a guiding principle or as in the olden days a lodestone was a magnet which was guiding the discoverer on his journey or her journey. The lodestone is your hypothesis. Whenever you do your literature review, keep your hypothesis in mind. Explore every facet of literature related to your hypothesis. This is very easy in today's world where you have access to data and publications using the Google Scholar or other search engines. You have to identify three types of literature. The ones which challenge your hypothesis, the ones which support it, and the ones which indicate gaps of knowledge. All of these should be included in your literature review. Use a good citation manager as you can delegate the task of managing your citations to your citation manager. Do not do this manually as the citation manager will take care of a lot of headaches associated with maintaining the accuracy of your citations. Now students ask me how many literature reviews or how many citation should I include in your literature and my answer is always focus on your lodestone which is your hypothesis. This is not a matter of quantity, it's a matter of quality. Material and methods. Choose your tools wisely because you cannot repair an engine with a jackhammer and construct a building with a saw. You need to choose the appropriate tools or you'll end up with a bad result. Now the quality of your data determines the quality of your thesis and the tools which you use for gathering this data should be pertinent. These instruments may be in the form of statistical instruments or in the case of instrumentation used in a scientific laboratory. The tools or the instruments which you use must gather the pertinent data. Any other noisy data is not relevant to your thesis and is not relevant to your research. Calibration of your tools using standards is the key. In the case of scientific instrumentation, please ensure that your data or your tools are calibrated using the standards. You need to collect sufficient data in order to make conclusions and the level of sufficiency is also determined using statistical tools. You must select the right tools for data analysis which are pertinent to your hypothesis and your objectives and you must establish statistical significance. This is a general guideline on the materials and the methods. The results. Now once you have gathered your data using the tools, we move on to results. Results are simply an unbiased presentation of your data. You should present your data clearly with all the designated legends as well as the designated units there should be no inconsistencies in your data and this is what examiners don't like. It's called helicopter data. So there's data which drops in into the results and this data has not been collected using the appropriate instruments. So I will say this is helicopter data and it should not be included in your thesis. Please do not include data which has not been collected using the appropriate 
instrumentation which is documented in the results section. There is also noisy data and this data is data which is not clear and this should not be included in your thesis. And there is also the issue of data manipulation which happens sadly and examiners can spot this very easily during the cross-questioning in Aviva. So please do not include data which has been manipulated. We now move on to the discussion and what is the discussion itself? Your discussion is founded on these three points. Does your data or your findings support existing hypotheses? Does it challenge existing hypotheses or paradigms or is it new data? Remember that a discussion is like weaving a tapestry. It's like weaving a cloth using different fibers or it's analogous to harmonizing an orchestra, establishing a harmony. And this is where the element of synthesis comes into play. Your examiner will look at your thesis in terms of the discussion and the discussion is generally one of the weakest points of a thesis. A good thesis synthesizes the findings. It establishes the results and the findings within the context of other researches. And this is where I mention the point about challenging existing paradigms, supporting existing paradigms or presenting new data. Every good discussion breaks new ground you are a researcher, you are not itemizing data and presenting it. You are establishing the basis for new ground because science is essentially philosophy or the love of knowledge. You should never end a discussion without closure. Every statement or every paragraph should have some closure. Please do not speculate on your data because speculation is not within the realms of scientific research and always state the facts. This is what I mean or what I want to highlight in the discussion section. Conclusions. You have written up your thesis and the most challenging aspect now is the conclusion itself because it involves synthesizing every element of the thesis within the scope of one or two pages as the case may be. The conclusion is essentially a syn synthesis. You must reiterate your story, but be concise. When you begin your conclusion, you state, what did you set forth to do? What was your original hypothesis? What did you discover? Did your data concur with your hypothesis? Did it support it? Did it challenge existing hypothesis? What was the interplay of your results? You may have multiple data points to correlate, but in this conclusion, you must synthesize all of these. What did you concur and what do you recommend? At this point of the thesis, you are now an expert in your field. So you have the right to state your recommendations and these recommendations will form the basis for future research. So your thesis is basically a tapestry. You have woven a cloth and you have given other people the opportunity to weave or continue weaving this by leaving certain loose ends and you have recommended the path for future researchers. You must state all your references. Please cite all literature because this represents an acknowledgement of all the giants who have done research before you. All supplementary data must be included in your thesis or on appropriate public databases so that the examiners can review your data and your peers can review and assess your thesis. With that, I would like to thank you. This has been a brief presentation on the writing of your thesis. I hope you have found it useful and I will delve into this topic in further discussions and presentations as we look at the details of thesis writing. With that, I thank you for your attention and your time and I wish you an enlightening journey. Thank you.